everybody, this is Rhino, and we're back to another recording of Hearthstone. Today is Wednesday, January 9th. We're starting a little later than I planned on starting, uh, because I was playing Minecraft uh, Stoneblock 2, Minecraft modded, and uh, it's, it's a time suck. I'm probably having a lot more fun with it, frankly, right now than I was having with... Uh, the end of the Borderlands 2 because Borderlands 2 just kind of went on forever. Let's see, we have two easy 50 uh, daily quests. We really only need to get one done. We have a tavern brawl, so we'll go into that. Um, what is this? A new twist on the Hearthstone construct a deck using only cards from Goblins vs. Gnomes, Grand Term, and the Witchwood, and Boomsday. Alright, whatever. So let's just take Rogue here, and then let's just type in Combo, and I guess I have to hit Enter, and... I'm just going to put all these combo cards in here. And I don't think that there is anything here. Uh, no. Nothing here. Alright, so... I guess these are old cards that they're having us play as play with. Or somewhat old cards, or somewhat new cards, or it seems almost like it's a ridiculous mix. Hmm. Let's just find some some things that we can do. Hmm. The other main thing that's happening right now is. I've managed to hurt my back. It's been deteriorating consistently, very slowly, for a long time now. And, like, even the slightest twist in the wrong direction, just turning to the left or right, is causing increased, at this point, much higher amounts of pain than I was suffering before. So, yeah, I probably should take a break and spend a week in bed or something like that. Uh, I'm not sure how well that's really going to actually happen, but it, it might be a consideration. I don't think we're going to go for a very long time streaming today. Uh, so I'm going to try to get None through the news my fury. pretty quickly um, and just have a shorter experience. This is, I guess, the exact same thing I always say, though. So, yeah, we'll get, well, I always want these streams to be a shorter thing. Also, I'd like to get back to Minecraft. Um... Stoneblock 2, though, it it really doesn't tell you what you're supposed to do. Um, the only reason I'm able to figure out half of what I've been able to figure out is because I have I have seen other people uh, play Stoneblock 1, and I've seen other people play modded things. Um, like, and there are certain mods in particular in Stoneblock 2. They're supposed to be early game mods where you have to go through a little bit more work and cause cause yourself a little bit more hassle uh, instead of Justice what would have mine. just been the default easy solution. Uh, no better example than Stoneblock 2 is the... There, there are these items where you can make low voltage, medium voltage, high voltage wire, and then you have to connect 
those to low voltage, medium voltage, high voltage. Um, what you got there? Uh, Justice is mine. Connectors, and then once you connect the wire to the connectors, you then have to connect it to a relay, um, and that's how you move the redstone flux energy which does not exist in in unmodded uh, Minecraft at all, but is kind of ubiquitously well, known. Everybody knows about the the electricity power and and how uh, modded very quickly turns you from from playing Minecraft where it is about mining and getting items and and ores and such and instead it turns it into a game about com uh, converting items into a single unit of, which is electricity um, and um, so I had to run up all these wires uh, on the other hand Stoneblock 2 is kind of weird because I'm making a lot further progress on generators and making a rainbow generator then I would have thought I should be able to do Reporting for like, duty. The, the fact that I can Reporting make culinary duty. generators and have have them eat cooked apples and power the small number of machines I have right now is kind of surprising uh, and yeah I just don't I don't know where it really goes to uh, I have struggled and it has taken me a lot of time to play to build a mob farm which is something because I've played Minecraft creative I've never really done and then the mob farm I built right now is so simplistic it, it's ridiculous and it, it doesn't really work but also because it's a mob farm that kills the mobs automatically I don't have a way to pick up the items that they're dropping uh, nor do I really have any storage to store things um, constantly Reporting I'm running into the issue of my inventory just being full of items uh, and like I need to get my mob farm to load endermen and if they don't uh, that uh, I'll never get ender pearls and so that's another issue hmm. <sighs> one moment I'm gonna cough Okay. Yeah, I just don't know how long this is going to be, so let's just start covering the news. My Minecraft is going to be Minecraft Stoneblock 2 is going to be a little bit different than Skyblock or any other Minecraft things. Uh, so, Gamma Sutra has an article, Get a Job, Shell Games is hiring an experienced technical artist, that's S-C-H-E-L-L. I'm trying. Uh, that's in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, probably the biggest news today, Activision GameIndustry.biz has an article, Activision Blizzard names three divisional presidents. There's now a new president for Activision, King, and Emergence, Emerging Business Units. Uh, I didn't realize that King was owned by Activision Blizzard. Hmm. So, is there, versus so that Al might Fury. be a turnaround and that might fix some of the problems with Activision Blizzard Fury. and people fleeing, uh, fleeing it like it's a sinking ship, but also this might just be too little too late or more of the same problem. Mm. Let's see. 
Uh, going forward, Rob Kostich will serve as president of Activision. Kostich previously served as the executive vice president and general manager for Call of Duty franchise. Um, done. Hmm. Uh, King's digital new president is Humam Saknini, who spent nearly three years serving as the group's CFO and chief strategy officer. Hmm. Like, a lot of these promotions and moving around at the top level often are, are just token gestures. Um, if, if you're particularly running a business where everything has been set into motion and the plans aren't going to ever change, uh, what's the difference if you're the chief financial officer or the CEO uh, when everybody is working together? And in, let's see, Activision Blizzard CFO Dennis Durkin is taking the role of the president of the company's emerging business division, which oversees Activision Blizzard's esports leagues, Activision Blizzard Studios, and Activision Blizzard Consumer Products Group, which I imagine all of those are like Overwatch related things. Just need to kill Justice some minions at the very least. Hmm. Really, it is just a case of only time will tell. Hmm. Moving on, Hearthstone themselves has a update. It's called Hearthstone Update, January 9th, 2019. Um, apparently. Arena is getting adjusted, um, so the appearance rate of each individual cards in the arena. Um, I guess in general this is going to be described as... Justice is mine! As um, Hunter, Rogue, and Warrior have had the average quality of the arena picks lowered, Druid, Mage, Paladin, Priest, Shaman, and Warlock have had the average quality of their arena picks raised. That's what they said. Said? Okay. Um, December update. The dust refunds that were available for the following last update, December 2018, are no longer available as of this post. So if I had any extra cards and I wanted to get a good dust refund on it we are the that that's no longer an option uh rumble run ch changes let's see hmm here's what's new with the new rumble ward run uh, you get they've increased the possibility of synergistic cards for your shrine appearing more often. One of the primary goals with this mode was to showcase the nine troll champions and get, get to know them. We wanted you to live the dream of fighting in Gurubashi's arena. Okay. Boss deck adjustments also. Um, so the thing to take from this, and I think it's it's pretty telling i never went back and won the rumble ones it was i did it once and i'm like i i kind of don't care enough so now i guess i'm going to be benefited uh, by that so if, if i have some free time which maybe i should take some free time off maybe i'll go back and and do that and get that card back but yeah um so they rebalance the bo boss deck, uh, and they're also making changes to the shrine selection. Uh, like this is written really long. This update is, and I just don't care to read it. <laughs> Frankly, it talking about the rumble run and I'm like 
Yeah, whatever. I, I could, could kind of care less. So it doesn't look like this update is nerfing any cards or anything like that. And if anything, um, since I don't play Arena, I don't care about that. I guess I should go back and do the Rumble Run. Uh, but, yeah. Like, right now my interest in playing Hearthstone is practically zero. And I'd, I'd much prefer to play Minecraft. Uh, right. Yeah, even right now, I'd much prefer to be playing Minecraft. And see, like, these tavern these tavern balls will probably just cheese them one way or the other. Um, I'll go get my Warlock deck and see how well that works. Uh, moving on, we have an article. Gamma Sutra has an article. Uh, the Berlin Museum opens an ex exhibition exploring the queer history of games. Uh, it's called Rainbow Arcade, apparently. Hmm. I kind of would like to withhold judgment on this, the idea. Uh, first of all, the Berlin Museum could be a tiny, tiny little uh, museum. Or it could be a giant museum. So that would drastically change what how much room they'd have to put on display uh, and then from that perspective I, do, I don't know just how many LGBTQ games actually have existed that are of any relevancy because there's so many troll games that go that route um, uh, and certainly you can maybe have parts of games be like that, but I think it is an oversimplification of Satan to call, call a game completely LGBTQ. Uh, like Dream Daddy, Dad's Dating Simulator is kind of one of them. And, but then you also have the Radiator series, which is basically a troll series, and it's hypersexualized and ridiculous. Um, Thank you. So, um, yeah, I'd like to be really, really surprised by, by this, this e exhibit, if I could see any part of it. But I imagine I will never see any part of it, and this'll just kind of be, this is just one of those Gamma Sutra articles where the person writing it is is just promoting it and, and activizing, act, acting as an activist instead of a reporter. Let's see. Moving on. Hmm. I'm Let's see. Guess we'll cover games. If that would be, I guess, what we gotta do. So we have a game on Steam called Legion of War. It looks like a Chinese hex tile placement RPG. It doesn't look too bad. It still kind of looks like a cell phone game. Or maybe just not going for a very provocative artistic style. Uh, it has like way too many game mechanics from the look of it that's like way too much it's early access for $9.99 um, and yeah English simplified and in traditional Chinese yeah, I really don't see anything here unfortunately while the animation looks pretty good I really don't see anything there that that looks like it would be something I'd want to play we are the sword in shadows. Join us in death. Let's see. 
next we have a TechCrafter article called Project Winter Pits You Against Wilderness and Each Other. This is probably an article just promoting this game. Yeah, it's, it's not out yet. Um, it's supposed to come out early 2019. So yeah, if Project Winter does come out, we'll talk about it at that point. Hmm. Now, I fo follow... Uh, like, Job done. Major Nelson of Microsoft, the guy in charge of Xbox, I think, still. And so he retweeted uh, an article from GeekWire called, uh, titled, Microsoft says goodbye to its past as demolition begins on the original buildings ahead of big uh, renovation. So, yeah, they're building a new um, buildings, which... Okay, does that really mean anything at all? Uh, not really. It might slightly affect, like, the... Some re releases, it, it might slightly affect like, something that comes out with Xbox, but I doubt it. Uh, moving on though, Gamma Sutra has an article, Song of Memories for PS4 launches February 1st in North America and Europe, but the Switch version is cancelled. Uh, publisher cites developer complications as a reason for the Switch version cancelling. The thing also to remember about Song of Memories is it is one of the games that got hit by the increased wave of censorship uh, dead. Hell no and so they had to censor out the Just word school and call it academy or at least they felt they needed to do that and uh, like any other references like that and this is p cube is the publisher for this visual novel and um and the uh, yeah, and PQ in a lot of ways seems to be at the forefront of running into these problems. I don't know if it's causing these problems on itself or what, uh, but it does seem like it is it is suffering a lot. All right, I played all the combo cards, so now I'm just gonna come over here and. Take Zoo Warlock, copy this, and see if we can make a better deck and win. Hmm. Alright, so that apparently won't work. Alright, well, if I'm gonna have to. If I'm gonna have to do this anyways, then I'm just gonna take the Hunter deck and Hunter has been pretty consistently good. Um, I would have thought this would have worked easier, but or it would have let me have the things um, <laughs> just gonna take a bunch of beasts and move forward from that point life steal, life steal rush And then we'll take some spell cards and see what we can do with spell cards. Bear trap. Guess maybe we can't do explosive trap. 
This feels like this is a random assortment of expansions. I guess I could look at the trailer for Song of Memories here. It's it shows a a beach scene with the girls in bikinis uh, for this fifth 14 second uh, trailer, and then that's pretty Watch much all. Uh, some other flashes Let's of other scenes. Begin. Looks like it is your just basic visual novel um doesn't particularly like look like it's even a dating so much game as much as it's a more mystery style of game moving on gameindustry.biz has an article supercells killed games celebrating lessons not failure the subtitle here is we only with only five well full launches in nearly 10 years, Supercell's numerous canceled titles serve as a groundwork for future success. Supercell being the developer of Clash of Clans, Clash Royale, and Brawl Stars being the newest one. Um, all of which are at least derivative in the name, if, if not in generic ideas. So... If they killed several other games, they probably also were pretty worry, derivative and deserved to be shot down, uh, killed. Let's see, Tech TechRaptor has an article, multiplay is shutting down community servers after 20 years of business. Uh, let's see. Hmm. So, multiplayer servers are well known in the gaming community, says this article, and that the killing floor, floor was one of them that uses or used those servers. So, then I wonder if the original Killing Floor nail uh, won't be playable. Uh, multiplayer servers will be shutting down for good as of February 28th, 2019, and the customers who had server time beyond this date will receive a refund. Interesting. Hmm. Seems like they pivoted into cloud computing and other hosting solutions. Uh, I've never heard of multiplay, but then again, I've also never considered or looked into uh, into to hosting a server. Uh, Gamma Sutra has an article, the Gris trailer, trailer, G R I S, was rejected from Facebook for being, quote, sexually suggestive. This is the second story we've seen like this in a uh, relatively short amount of time. My guess is this is a simple case of the. Uh, Uh, the algorithm that is built around flagging ads uh, is very sensitive, unless it is a person and not an algorithm that's also very sensitive. Uh, the Gris trailer, or at least the image that's being shown, uh, really just is a lady in a silhouette and that's it so I don't see why that would would by any even the most conservative uh, perspective I don't see how that that falls under the category of sexually suggestive
So I imagine it will get cleared up pretty quickly. Uh, GameIndustry.biz has another article. Former Blizzard employee alleges racism and discrimination drove him uh, to leave. Uh, Jules you Morillo Cooler, C-U-E-L-L-E-R, says abuse triggered panic attacks, nervous breakdowns, and even plans for suicide. Uh, now, the problem with anything like this is you you have an employee here who was either asked to leave or left making these claims and maybe to even their own perspective these claims are 100 percent accurate which i mean let's uh, that doesn't really sadly mean that it actually happened or uh, the, the truth is if you're looking at reality from a very narrow perspective uh, uh, if you are coming from the ridiculous idea that everything is racist everything is sexist uh, to to quote uh, Anita Sarkeesian then yeah you're gonna see that and you're gonna have a bad time uh, it might be easier just to realize that maybe people are just jerks or you don't always get your way uh, that's my speculation without going any further in this story it, is that there, there's a lot of people all over the world who quit jobs and claim it's because they were being treated unfairly and differently than everyone else sometimes it's it's you're getting treated unfairly just like everybody else and you're seeing it as some special bias when really it's just the fact that bosses treat people badly and jobs treat people badly right, let's play one more game Zoo uh, See, he tweeted out a tweet longer post. Uh, he's fought, filed a federal complaint on his treatment and reached out to the Equal Employment Gul'dan Opportunity Commission. Rexa. He he has now shared his Rexa experience publicly begin. to finally Your get closure in the court. Uh, this is also like though how people who make false claims or um, exaggerated claims. Uh, I go about it too. Let's see. Let's let's just read these claims and see how credible I feel like they are. Hmm. Honestly, though, you know, it kind of doesn't matter to. Uh, because, Why do you call yeah, it's very possible in every single video game company, there are um, sing single departments with two, three, four, five people in it where something goes on, but this information never got outside of that department, so the CEOs, the CFOs don't ma know. The rest of the company is run completely different. Uh, the games that come out are, are good, and overall, the company has no other problems. Um, it, it becomes a much bigger story when you talk about when at least the story is framed like the Riot Games stories, where they're saying it's company-wide, it's this whole issue. Um, at least then... Uh, that's something that feels like it's a bit more news. Uh, let's see. The, the article goes on. After getting full-time position on the team, he claims he was left out of meetings and calls about important components of the then-current tour, and that a colleague would 
quote, joke about my sexism or natural inclination to be sexist due to my Mexican heritage. Uh, okay. Like, so, so that seems like you had a problem with a, a co-worker. Um, did so far it doesn't sound like he was even uh, on, on a level high of you. The assumption that my attitudes beliefs were that of a Mexican masochista male chauvinist. Uh, I didn't make much of this since she said it in jest, but this would weigh on me. He continues the jokes about his machismo and being Mexican would only become uh, more frequent. And he was eventually diagnosed with major depression and anxiety. Sounds like he's um, um, failed to to either tell this woman uh, to stop with the jokes or um, or uh, seek out assistance with him with the, his supervisor. Let's see. A few months after joining the team, he spoke to his manager about his treatment. Okay, so he did speak to a manager. And... Hmm. Let's switch over to the European account now. Uh, there's a new bundle where you could buy, like, some more Hearthstone cards. I'm not going to take him up on that offer. Uh... The story continues, I was told that I was being moody, moody and that nobody knew how to approach me when I told him what was happening. I was told not to pay attention and that he would take care of it. Uh, that wouldn't be the case and the racial attacks continued. Uh, so far, it feels very much like someone was attempting to be friendly and joking with them. And he took it as an attack. And yeah, this really does feel like somebody who who from day one had a perspective that was always going to end this way. Alright, let's play Druid. Druid. Hmm. I'm just gonna see if I can grab some jewelry cards I guess what this is really doing is making it impossible for you to play the standard old basic cards and that probably is really screwing up the things uh, Morello Cruella felt like he'd been become the team's punching bag and he was still being left out of key meetings. He also alleged that his instrumental contributions to Hearthstone esports activities in 2016 was completely omitted during an internal review while both his manager and colleagues that led the abuse received promotions. Uh, well, he didn't talk of an incidence of his manager. Uh, combined with how regularly he would work into the early hours of the morning, this began to take the toll on his health. Over the following two years, he would suffer regular panic attacks and multiple nervous breakdowns, uh, developed post-traumatic stress disorder, and even began to consider suicide at various points. Um, so straight up, he's admitting he's crazy. Like, and then it becomes the question, was he crazy at the beginning when he was hired? And I think he probably was. Like, I've, I've worked with people who are crazy, literally crazy, diagnosed crazy. Uh, and, yeah, if you have PTSD, uh, I've dealt with people with PTSD. They, they see offense in everything. Uh, and the real world is a little bit of offense. Somebody's going to make a joke that it's going to rub you the wrong way. Sometimes you're not going to take it if you're... If you're, if you 
don't let that roll off your back and you let it fester within you, you're, you're not going to be able to survive in the real world. Um, let's see. Morello Crow left Blizzard in April 2018, going briefly to work at Rocket League developer Psyonix before setting up his own firm, Murray Entertainment. Hmm. Oh, and by the way, uh, at some point, I, I didn't even get this story, uh, Blizzard decided to reveal that Overwatch character Soldier 76 is gay, which, okay, by the, feels like there's a chance that by the time Overwatch is no longer a big game, they will have announced that every single character in the lineup is gay. Uh, but whatever. If if that's what they want to do with their characters, that's fine by me. Uh, putting any kind of backstory or characterization in characters in Overwatch, which, frankly, saying somebody is gay is not really giving them any backstory or characterization in the first place. Uh, it doesn't matter, like, uh, because it it really doesn't have any connection to to the rest of the um, game and gameplay uh, that, that was something Borderlands 2 they, they added characterization and character right and uh, and personalities to the characters that you played as in Borderlands 1 which is more evidence Seems like Borderlands 1 Game of the Year Edition is coming out. Uh, but by putting a very specific personality and, and character on those characters you were playing out, on those, uh, those, yeah, characters you were playing as in the first game, it really ruined any headcanon you would have had uh, already built up. Uh, So, uh, yeah, it, it, it kind of sucked. Moving on, uh, I suppose it is only fair that if we try to be balanced, it, it could be that Blizzard, that that, that story was 100% accurate, and Blizzard in that office or throughout its entire uh, business was treating him terribly and all of that. And... Yeah, I guess that is totally reasonable. So Let's see. But that could have also been happening. You know, sometimes I even think about like jobs I've worked and how I felt like I was being treated there. And I go back and I think about it. And, and I, I want to just confirm with myself, do I still feel like I was being uh, treated well or bad in that position, at that in that instance? And like one of the first jobs I worked, I really did feel like people were in general overly negative and I... I um, Sometimes go back and just think, was that entire office just full of really, really negative people? Or was I just expecting too much? Oh, I screwed that up. Um, and usually I go back and I, uh, when I do think about it, I'm like, no, they, they kind of were overly negative. Maybe I was a little bit young and naive and expected too much from from them and maybe I expected to be coddled a little bit in my first job but uh, but in the end since that was a job that I quit um, they, I think I definitely did the right thing 
Uh, moving on, Gamento has an article, Dollhouse launches in 2019. The film noir psychological horror games gets its final box art. Uh, this really is an announcement of an announcement though, uh, and not news because there's, there's no real date here, just as coming out for the PS4 and the PC. Hmm. So the PlayStation 4 uh, announced that they had sold nearly 10 million uh, units. Sony announced that. And the, the only reason I think you me. would want to announce that it, in, instead of waiting until you actually had over 10 million units is because I think they're, they're admitting that they're not actually going to get the 10 million units in enough time where they could announce that and have um, and also announce uh, the PlayStation 5. I think the PlayStation 5 is closer than people think. Uh, perhaps since Sony's not going to be at E3, maybe they're going to do a pre-announcement. That would be crazy if they came out a week or two before, said the PlayStation 5 is coming uh, at this date. That would be crazy, certainly, and they tried to steal the show. Uh, or they could even do it like a day after uh, the E3 press conference and have everybody forget everything that happened at E3. Uh, but then Sony has just been acting weird ever since they moved moved the offices to California so maybe they're just dumb. <laughs> that is a possibility too to announce that they have 9.1 million units sold instead of waiting till that other 900,000 comes. But maybe they also know that other 900,000 isn't going to come. So the, that's pretty much just circular logic r r random speculation. Moving on, we have a game on Steam called Jar Battlers, which is a NES looking single screen game where you're fighting Hold each other. On. Looks like Super Mario uh, Brothers 2, except for you're throwing so jars at each other. And it's multiplayer only. It's discounted to four dollars and eighty nine cents. I kind of dig the art style, but there's there's really no game here. Like you're just throwing jars at each other. Then that's it. That's too simplistic. Uh, let's see. Gematria is an article, Catherine Classic, rated for PC in Germany. Well uh, more evidence of the imminent release. Uh, still not sure if Catherine Classic and Catherine Full Body, what the differences are. Uh, Gamatsu has another article. Tokyo Kronos is delayed to March 20th for PC and July for PlayStation VR. This virtual reality visual novel that was kickstarted. Uh, for duty. So, I haven't heard of Tokyo Kronos. We'll get more news, I guess, when it actually comes out. I want to play this until I have the character on on the t field. Next, we have a game on Steam called Christmas Time 2019. This came out January 9th, 2019. So clearly, they were too late to the party, and they were going to try and release this for Christmas 2018. Uh, nobody is going to remember this game or know of this game by the time 
uh, Christmas rolls around next year. It's sort of an interesting idea, but it really is just an asset flip game. A shooter where you're shooting bazookas that shoot out trees, presents, and Christmas lights. It's kind of like a 3D version of Paperboy. 10% uh, for 89 cents. 10% off for 89 cents. So um, many possibilities. Chill this, out. This, this, this. So yeah, that's not making it to the fall list. I, I wouldn't be surprised if nothing makes it to the fall list today. Um, next we have a game on Steam called Zombies in the Dark. Early access for $2.39. Doesn't look like it even has a picture. Looks like it's a top-down... Top-down, two-stick shooter. Yep. Nothing interesting at all there. Until next turn, got it. Alright, now I'll just go ahead and play this. Next, next, we have a game on Steam called Bite Chaser. This looks awful. Like, really, really bad. Putting a lot of filters over this to. I think hide the fact that you can't animate anything. Early access for fourteen dollars and thirty-nine cents. No, sorry, there's just nothing here visually that that would make me think it's a good game. There's text on the screen and this just looks like a basic UI asset flip and it's all black barred, you can't even get into full screen. Yeah. Hmm. Deal two damage. This. This. Chill out. This. Hit this. Plus one, plus one. Hit this. Plus one, plus one. And do that. Win streak bonus. Yeah, I'm gonna stick with the win streak bonus. Hmm. Guess I need to because I need to kill some more minions. Next is a game on Steam called The Dating World. Looks like a very low effort Chinese game. Um, if I. Yeah, it looks like it's a port of a cell phone game. Discounted to a dollar and seventy-nine cents. English, Japanese, simplified Chinese. Yep, that looks like a. Uh, hmm. Hmm. Let's see. Okay. Yep. Not a game that's making it to the follow list. That was reading the mature description content description and it seemed like it was saying well if you get in the chat you people will might harass you let's see gamatsu has an article yoshi's crafted world launches march 29th i haven't heard of any announcement or news about a game called yoshi's crafted Greetings. world i guess this is a sequel to Yoshi's Woolly World. I greet you. Uh, I'll get uh, it looks ah. definitely like that. So another Nintendo game. Not particularly one though that that I, I was big or interested in. YouTube had its own uh, It's its own issue, certainly January 8th, well played. Uh, for a decent amount of time, I guess, 
the YouTube was just not working for some people and they were working on it. So many possibilities. Next, we have a troll game that I'm not going to show you called Gachi Finder, G-A-C-H-I Finder, 3000, it's $1.19, it's terrible. Hmm. It's... Well played. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go ahead and squelch this guy, he's going to try and... You make noise every time you take too long. Open Critic has that article I already talked about. Sony reports that nearly 100 million PS4 units have, have been sold. Um, yeah, you, you pretty much know that they're not planning on... Um, they're, they're really not planning on having any sales of the PS4 next Christmas and next Black Friday because if they were they, they would have waited I, I think they would have waited yeah moving on GameIndustry.biz has this article Tim Sweeney enters the billionaire index nearly 3 billion ahead of Gabe Newell uh, neither trouble uh, Netty CEO or Tencent co-founder uh, despite difficult year for the Chinese market. Uh, so Epic Games founder and CEO Tim Sweeney is on this index of billionaires, which is questionably accurate at best. And win streak bonus. And we still need to kill some more things. Let's see. Open Critic, I don't usually read Open Critic articles. It's weird that Open Critic even puts out articles. Uh, but they have one Dead or Alive 6 delayed slightly for better balance. Uh, okay, take it from that. Versus my their, their article here is barely my one paragraph so and then a quote lie. of a paragraph and then a sentence. Hmm. Let's take this. Next, we have a game on Steam called The Chronicles of Jonah and the Whale. This is one of those games that is just a simple low effort match three game that is also trying to sell itself using a biblical story. Uh, $5.24 discounted. That is really, really expensive for a match three game. English and German. See, and I don't think this is really something you would call a troll game as much as just a low effort game. Um, you can see, well you can't see now, but I'm looking at everything else they've developed and it seems like a lot of things were published in very quick succession and uh, succession is what I meant to say there um, and nothing has any reviews let's see the developer so eh, developer is kind of the same too Next, we have a game on Steam called Road Club League Racing. This might be good. So I'll put it on the fall list. There are several of these arcade style top-down racing games. Uh, this probably isn't what I'm looking for though because I, I don't like the camera being so zoomed in in this one instance of racing. And this does look like some pretty low quality MS Paint level graphics in some places it's rated positively so it's nine dollars and 99 cents i'm gonna say no to this uh particularly since there's a decent chance i would never actually play this style of game anyways
Next we have a game on Steam called Pixelfish, which I'm fairly certain we'd seen something very similar to this a couple of weeks ago. Again, bad quality and paint graphics, discounted to $1.69, and kind of just an uninteresting concept for a game in the first place, a virtual fish tank. See, next we have a game on Steam called Trends, which looks to me like it is some kind of, let's see, Trends is the one and only game powered by the internet. Players pit search terms against mm, each other to see which are more likely to be highly ranked. Yeah, that's what I thought it was. <laughs> like, it's what does Google think is searched more often, or say is searched more often than something else? And it probably limits you to the first couple of letters if, like, MAG or magnet something. I hope you like At my least the first game. word. It's free, so the price is right, but it really doesn't look like the kind of game that needs to exist in the first place. And I'm not kidding here, we barely have 15 games left and we've only been going in an hour but I kind of like this idea too of just less work being done at, on Hearthstone uh, next we have a game on Steam called Maze 3D it looks like it's rendering just horribly with flickering and it's super dark super simplistic like, I don't feel like the simplistic view style really improves the gameplay much. Like, there's half an idea there, I guess, but not a complete game. $2.24 discounted. Yep. I'm going to go ahead and do this. And this. And then this. Hmm. Next, we have a game on Steam called Pandemonium, which is clearly an asset flip game that's mis mixing pandas and guns and soccer and just random garbage. Early access for 69 cents discounted. Yeah, that's not making it to the list. Is this guy gonna finish his turn? Next we have a game on Steam called Hyper Scuffle, which looks like a very poorly an animated game in vector graphics where you're just fighting each other in some pretty simplistic areas. Maybe there's a bit of a gameplay mechanic there where you blow up or transport or teleport people, but yeah. It's a probably multiplayer only really or multiplayer focused. It's a dollar seventy nine cents. It's not visually appealing. Um okay. I wonder this this Job's done. That was the one I didn't want to lose, but whatever. Gameindustry.biz has an article. Supercell brings in nearly 1.4 billion in 2018. The Brawl Stars debut earned $46 million from its launch in the later half of December. Okay, so. That's a little bit inside baseball, but okay, that's there. Hmm. What is 
this? One of the people who worked on The Walking Dead, the final season, is now working for Bonfire Studios. And his name, I, I believe, is S Z Y M O N space S W I S T U N. Sizman, or si probably Sizz Simon. Uh, uh, Swiston. Oh, I keep forgetting to kill minions. Let's keep this win streak going. We'll just ride this win streak out until we lose, and then we'll switch over to the Asian account. Kimatsu has an article Giga Wrecker Alt rated for the PS4, Xbox One, and Switch in Taiwan. Um, the art style on this game, Giga Wrecker Alt, uh, at least on the picture I'm seeing, it looks very um, unique. It is like young anime girls, but then also like extremely slender and tall and skinny and then like one of them has a robotic arm uh, that's extremely slender and the other one has maybe another uh, like a power glove hmm. and they I think I've heard of this game it launched on PC February 2017 so let's look at the the page. So apparently it's coming to consoles. A lot of PC games are coming to consoles. So here we have the light protects Giga Wrecker Alt. Let's see the girl has this like arm. Oh yeah, I think I remember looking at this on my wish list and thinking to myself, yeah, this is this is a weird one. Um, let's see. So I'm gonna double check to make sure this I is on my want, wish list. Uh, and there's kind of nothing else to say about it though. It's $19.99, no discount. Um, the, the, the main thing you take from from a lot of these articles when games are coming to consoles is theoretically if I could cover that no game and have the footage come out candles. when the game comes out on consoles maybe that would get me a few more random views on YouTube and speaking of random views I did get a new subscriber I think I lost a subscriber at some point because I went from two like 313 to 312 um, yeah, seems like every week or so I get one or two new subscribers. Um, I still would need to, uh, I guess in the next 52 weeks or so, I would need to get um, more than 10 subscribers a day. Yeah. That's really what it, what it boils down to is I, I would need more than 10 subscribers in a day, every day, to get even where, anywhere close to getting a thousand subscribers to getting back to being monetized. And yes, that could certainly happen on YouTube. You, you could get lucky, something you could be trended, something could, uh, could gain popularity but also there's a decent oh, chance that won't happen oh, go on. 
honestly, I have a much better odds than just having people support me through Patreon or gift me games through Steam than YouTube helping me to get a thousand subscribers. Um, or also there's a good chance you, YouTube changes its policies again and but they probably change it in the other direction. They probably raise it to you need 10,000 subscribers to be monetized. Um, that, that would certainly be an interesting question about just how few videos would have to be posted on YouTube until to make YouTube realize people are abandoning its service. Uh, how many how few new channels per day would it would it take for them to get that message? I don't think they'd ever get it. Next game we have is called Smith and Winston. It's, it's a shooter with that Roblox Minecraft style. I would say it's more Roblox than Minecraft. It's early access for $9.99. It doesn't look interesting. There we go. So, that was my two quests on Europe. And now we switch over to the Asian account. And while that's happening, Game of Sutra has an article, get a job, join the Crystal Dynamics team as a camera designer. That job is located in Redwood City, California. Hmm. Gamatsu has an article, the NES Nintendo Switch Online adds Blaster Master and Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link January 16th. And Japan also gets Joy Mech Fighter. So, seems like they're getting a little bit more of a benefit. Druid, Druid, Druid. So I'm going to reroll this and watch and learn. Alright. Let's watch and learn. <laughs> Blaster Master is a game... In the name I recognize, certainly, but I don't think I've ever actually played it. Hmm. And The Legend of Zelda 2 is still kind of a terrible game, so I don't think there'd be a lot of reasons. Blaster Master, you're a platforming tank, uh, or you're a character that's in a tank that gets out of it. And it's a side-scrolling platformer, but it also seems like it's a uh, shoot 'em up game in the boss fights. Let's see. Oh, I'm just watching, so I don't have to. I don't have to focus on that. Um, there's literally no way you'd ever be able to beat Zelda 2 without a walkthrough. In my opinion, and even at that, it's still going to be extremely difficult uh, without cheating in lots of different ways. Uh, Zelda 2 was incredibly ambitious, trying to be something like Skyrim when really it shouldn't have been. It should have just been a different map layout of Zelda 1. Uh, that's what all anybody ever wanted. And it, it wasn't in, until like the Game Boy games come out that. Let's see, can this guy really win? Yep. We already talked about this, but Gamma Sutra has the article Gris trailer rejected from Facebook for being sexually suggestive. Uh, let's see, TechRaptor has an article Paint a Beautiful World in E-Shade coming to the PC next month. 
E-Shade looks like it might be a really interesting game uh, from this one screenshot. Let me look at the trailer since we're, we're watching and learning. I wonder. Mm. Yeah, I'm not sure what the painting does with this. Seems like you can put down an easel and paint things and paint specific scenes and that might be a key to unlocking something but All right, so this guy lost well that guy is there if I watch and learn this I think this guy would probably win. Yeah, so I have no idea about East Shade, but I'll I can do this. I'll wait, I guess, until February 13th for it to come out. Cause yeah, it, it looks really pretty in its one gameplay mechanic that it's explaining, uh, but. I don't know what the real game is there, or if there is any real game, or if this is really just maybe somebody made a pretty world and then, then put any gameplay mechanic in it. But yeah, let's wait till it actually comes out before we think about doing anything. Uh, Gamma Sutra has an article, uh, get a job. Disbelief is looking for a junior programmer. Uh, that job is Cambridge, Ma in Cambridge, Massachusetts. If you're interested, junior programmer. Hmm. Disbelief. Apparently, they worked on Borderlands, the Handsome Jack Collection, Gears of War 4, and Perception. That doesn't mean though that they were the uh, the main people who worked on those games let's see the skill requirements on this are a BA a bachelor's of arts or a bachelor's of science in computer science or equivalent experience excellent communication skills both verbal and written some type of system programming in any systems programming in any language good understanding of C++ and knowledge of version control with P4, Git, or equivalent. So, yeah. I don't know if colleges teach classes on version controls, but they definitely should. Uh, and clearly, like, every game ever is gonna require um, clear communications skills. They, they mention it twice here uh, in the job list. This is an interesting story from Gamma Sutra. Splash Damage is cutting monetization from its free-to-play game Dirty Bomb. Uh, D Dirty Bomb is going free-to-play in the most little interpretation of this term. You don't got the After an update next week, all monetization will be patched out of the game following last month's announcement that the dev team is widening down live support for the game. It's both a nice gesture and a neat way for developers all to say show. thank you Nobody. to dirty um, players shine. for supporting the game through the years, even though the team won't be making any new content for the game here on out. Uh, Let's see. My question, though, is what is Dirty Bomb? It, I bet it's a Overwatch style game. Uh, let's see. Uh, Dirty Bomb on Steam. That was like the fifth Google result when you search the phrase Dirty Bomb. 
Yeah, it's a free-to-play first-person shooter multiplayer shooter game. Uh, yeah, it's multiplayer only. So it probably has not too many people playing it these days. No, actually, today's peak was 499 people, and it had an all-time peak of 12,963 people at the same time. It's like a Team Fortress clone. So, but they got out Overwatch. This came out in 2015. And, yep. So, yeah, they're winding it down and they're making it free, but I bet they're going to shut down the servers pretty quickly. And then Splash Damage has no upcoming releases and they have no other releases so yeah that sounds like the company's going out of business if you ask me yeah you you don't wind down your game and put it in the free to play maintenance mode before you announce your next game and have it come out and have it be out for a while. Well, I did predict that 2019 we'd probably see quite a few game companies go out of business. Uh, I bet Splash Damage is going to be one of them. But, uh, Techcraft has another cool new Devil May Cry. Five demo comes to Xbox One That's and PS4 bad. next month. Uh, speaking of demos, the uh, the Resident Evil 2 demo is apparently going to be 30 minutes time limited gameplay, which is going to be weird. Certainly, it's always weird when they do demos like that. Uh, because then it, you're just gonna end at some random point instead of end on the cliffhanger. Uh, speaking of nothing, uh, that reminded me though, uh, apparently in the UK, as part of their growing conservative policies and anti-porn policies, uh, you now, uh, they implemented a law where you have to verify your identity and your age via credit card uh, transaction to look at any porn site uh, which doesn't really protect any children because uh, lots of children can get access to their parents credit card pretty easily um, and frankly it, it, it's just kind of silly. Pirate, torrent sites and pirate sites are not going to verify people's uh, age. It's over for me. Seriously, is neither one of these people capable of winning? Let's see, Tavern Ball. Let's watch this Tavern Ball. Uh, Moving on, GameIndustry.biz has an article, Aptopia, Aptopia December Report, No Gods, No Kings, Only Revenue. A lack of massive new releases allows for a more even revenue spread at the top as publish popular publishers debut more titles. Um, this is an article talking about games that came out. Uh, white games came out and how they made money on mobile phones. It doesn't actually, I think, name any games. Uh, or names a couple, but nothing that's really recognizable or really something that I think would be relevant to talk about. Hmm. What's your poison? Let me show you the arcade! Uh, moving on, Gamatsu has an article. Fairy Fencer F Advent 
Dark Forces for Switch launches January 17. That was a mouthful. On the eShop for $39.99. Uh, what kind of game is this? It's a compile heart game. Uh, RPG. Game just, it looks like it's just anime girls in an RPG. Which seems to be what ID, Idea Factory and Compile Heart do a lot of. And they're somewhat good at it. Is this guy gonna really win? What I hope. Uh, TechRaptor has an article Go Duck Hunting in HD Hyperkin to announce a new NES light gun. Well fought. So, how are you going to get a light gun to work with HDTVs is going to require different kinds of technology. Uh, I know there's been a couple of them that, uh, that are out there, but they've been pretty expensive. Um, and I'm not... Ooh, a legendary. Can we get an epic with a legendary? Nope. Nice. Let's see. Disenchant dealers. So, just that legendary is the only one that was new. But that's certainly a good legendary to get. Spell damage, death rail, draw a card. We win here? Nope, we haven't won. And then what what did we need to do? Druid victories. So we're gonna have to do like two druid victories real quick. Druid druid. Um just really quickly have all these on the, in the deck and just try to play a couple of these Ideally, I'm looking to, to get like one free victory rather quickly. Hmm. Uh, the Hyper Blaster HD, this new zapper, will be compatible only for classic game consoles over modern ones. <laughs> So basically, you, you're plugging it into an NES. So this is a replacement NES zapper. It's pretty much it is. Malfurion hmm. versus Rexa. Yeah, it says original Duck Hunt cartridge and NES required. Includes uh, Hyper Blaster HD light gun. It includes Hyper Blaster HD adapter to allow HD TV compatibility yeah so that's kind of a disappoint disappointing announcement for that there definitely are some light guns out there that act just as mice and it may not be the highest quality that you'd like them to be but they're, they're not on the level of uh, totally not working with modern computer computers or, or your consoles uh, moving on gameindustry.biz has an article Sony acquires audio kinetic uh, PlayStation picks up W wise maker but audio middle middleware outfit will continue to operate independently and support multiple platforms let's see 
weird. It feels weird that Sony would be acquiring a company when Sony overall really does not have the money for that. And uh, in shorter Job's done. succession, they don't. Uh, Sony Entertainment Interactive, uh, the Sony PlayStation department, doesn't really feel like they should Why be acquiring companies either. But if they are acquiring an audio company, maybe it does have something to do with the development of the next PlayStation. I'm not sure why they need that, though. Where my trees at? Let's see. Job done. Next, we have a game on Steam called The Yellow Quiz, which is... Obviously an extremely low effort game. Just not interesting at all to look at. Early access for $2.99. That's not making it to the list. And this should be our last game if assuming everything goes well. Alright. Here's what we wanna do. We wanna do this. This and then do this job done in the time. Next we have a game on Steam called Fused, which looks like it's a VR game, but I guess it's not. It's just a bunch of neon symbols for some kind of puzzle game. It doesn't make a lot of sense. In fact, basically nothing I'm saying implies that this is really a game. As much as maybe it's just a walk around place. You have this symbol that seems to follow you around. You know what? I'm going to give this one a chance though. I'll put this on the follow list. We'll see. Maybe people hmm. really do like it. Maybe it plays better. Uh, there's n this video isn't really showing anything of the gameplay, but yet it's not making a lot of sense. But yeah, so I'll I'll give it a chance. I'm gonna be generous. Hmm. Uh, this. Next, here's an interesting story from Tech Raptor. Uh, Paradox Interactive has acquired the game Prison Architect, and I guess this means all rights to it, from Introversion Software, which were the developers of the Uplink in the Multilinear and Dolinear series, and then they made Prison Architect, which felt like a very different game. And Introversion really is kind of like a small time game developer company so maybe they realize the that, uh, me. that it would be wise to, to to let somebody ever else take over the reins of the game uh, because say about it you know. it's weird certainly to have a company buy a game directly but we'll see how that turns out like we'll see if prison architect gets some major updates and this becomes even better of a game than what it is now or if it becomes way worse Game of Sutra has the same article about Sony Interactive Entertainment. Uh, let's see. Let's do this. Let's. Hmm. 
So it's not Sony's parent company, it is Sony Interactive Entertainment. Uh, the required audio kinetic. Interesting. It's the com audio kinetic, dip, kinetic, the game company behind game dev tools like the widely used audio middleware WYs. I've seen WYs advertised. Hmm. Yeah. Take a walk on the wild side. For the wild. Hmm. So, so maybe Sony is making some middleware to make it easier to play audio, higher quality, better audio on games. But if that's the case, I, I, that'd be weird if Sony then only let people who release on the PlayStation exclusively use that software. Well, we have about five more articles. Uh, TechRaptor has an article, Michael A. Stackpole resigns from GAMA and slams the boards of directors. The GAMA is the Game Manufacturers Association. Uh, and it says, for years, Stackpole has worked against both censorship and bigotry in the industry, perhaps moment, most famously in the pulling report. Uh, quote, with Lauren Wiseman's help in the late 1980s and 1990s, I successfully led the fight against the religious right and their attempts to censor and abolish the games we create, enjoy, and share. I still take pride in gamers reporting to me that the pulling report enabled them to fight back against anti-game bigotry even to this day. Though the work is difficult, I'm pleased to continue the fight as part of the Industry Watch Committee of GAMA. Let's see. GAMA is a non-profit organization in the hobby game industry. It runs trades. I don't know if this is video game related or if this is board game related. Uh, this article. Hmm. Let's see. There's the next quote here. During my time in the industry, I've seen incredible changes for the better and incre incredible resilience to recover from all manner of disasters, economic, social, and board generated. I have a great belief that the game industry. Um, that the gaming industry will survive and thrive in the future. It is bigger than any one person or a board. It can be defined only by the pleasure and joy it brings everyone it touches and therefore will be eternal. Hmm. Let's see. Is there really anything more to to this uh, non-article? Yeah, GMA is a board game. This is just TechRaptor talking about board game stuff. And yeah, there's drama and board game stuff. Who would have guessed? I kind of knew that already. Let's summon two of those. Hmm. Check here. Let's see, Gamatsu has an article, Dark Devotion launches for the PS4, Switch, and PC in early 2019. It's a 2D side-scrolling action RPG. And let's see. We can show off its Steam page. 
it is dark, so dark screenshot syndrome. Looks like it's a Metroidvania style of game. So when this actually comes out, we'll talk about it more. Yeah, definitely no news since Monday. <laughs> Not a big surprise. It's still still early half of January. We probably won't see see any major gaming announcements or news until Quickly. late February, mid April. Uh, which is cool, but then that means when we have these Hearthstone quests, then we're gonna run into issues of not really having too much to talk about which is kind of fine for me we actually are going to go about two hours let's see well this is in hand okay you well in your hand this is a 3-4 copy of the last minion you played Okay. I see. Job's done. This would cost Quickly. less if more trends died. Next, we have a game on Steam called Cedar Junction. It looks like a low effort horror game with asset for just generic very very ugly looking 3d models early access for 17.99 discounted yeah right cedar junction where are my trees at let's see some of the wisp some more trance If I can Job get this done. down to zero, then I could play this for zero, too. Hmm. I think. TechRaptor has an article, uh, Nexon allegedly is worth $9 billion and the founder is putting it up for sale. We had, I had mentioned this, a South Korean developer, uh, the developer of MapleStory 2, Mag, Mabogini, and other free-to-play MMOs, uh, was selling his company, basically. Uh, and he's trying to sell it for $9 billion. Uh, another story that's not getting reported is Steam put out its top 10 games of 2018, top selling games or something. And number two is that sexual content game Mirror, where it is a shrine maiden alien, uh, anime woman who has rope, bondage rope uh, tied around her. Uh, So, should play that first. Yeah, I, I guess the thumbnail and sex sells somewhat well. And that put it in the number two slot, just below Rimworld, uh, which is just a like real-time strategy game. So it's kind of weird for Valve to, to be doing their whole censorship thing that they were doing all of late uh, 2018 and then have to come back and, and admit, oh no, actually this adult game was the second best selling game we had. And that, that game Mirror gets promoted all the time to me. I see it all the time. Uh, so much so, it's probably at the top three uh, 
of adult games I would buy if I was just going to set out to buy an adult game. Uh, just so I can get it off my wish list and not have to look at it anymore. So yeah, I, I wanted to mention that at least. So there, there, there's some weirdness, Strap certainly in. there. Uh, last game I believe we have is a game on Steam, just as I know, called Scroll to Read, which looks like an asset flip random game that's also trying to be educational or pretend like it's educational. It's just like a low effort asset flip game. Early access free to play. Guess the price is right. So that leaves us with only two games that are even potentially going to be on the fall list. Um, and yeah, unless I was to get a really quick um, really really quick victory I'm not going to go back so we covered these pictures of um, games that were posting pictures of sheep on Steam and it uh, has been updated this article has been updated several times and so now the the pictures that correlate to steam codes that correlate to what seem to be fake items or fake games that have already been activated like I tried to activate it activate the keys and it said it's our, the product had already been activated and so it, Monday they had gotten far enough to say uh, get ready for something sexy and now it's up to get ready for something sexy on PC um, so maybe ooh, a epic we got some decent cards um, so unless there, there's probably one more or a couple more. Yeah, that was an extra epic too, so that's just going into a dust, dust pile. Uh, one more update. Let's see, yes. So that last update is probably going to say a date or out now. It w I wouldn't be surprised if it was out now. So, I need to get one more victory with the druid, um, but I think I'll do that off screen. I am looking at the Humble Bundle store. I always feel like I'm giving special preference to the Humble Bundle store, but I guess I am because if you do it right, you can actually donate to 100% to charity on the Humble Bundle store when you buy games, whereas I don't know of any other game company like that. And uh, the developer of Super Meat Boy is trying to get the rights to make a video game for oh, based on the movie Over the Top, which is a terrible, uh, I think, arm wrestling, somewhat, it's a somewhat arm wrestling based movie. Uh, and I'm just going to scroll through my Twitter on my own time because even if I do find a couple of new games, we'll talk about them on Friday. And there's really, I doubt, going to be any actual new games or any news that happens for 
as dry as it was between Monday and Wednesday, it's pretty obvious that the same will be true for um, for the next couple days too. So that's going to be the end of this stream. As always, I ask you to like, share, subscribe, comment, and watch every second of my videos. If you want a friend to follow me on any social media sites, there's a bunch of links down below. And if you want to support me even further, there's a link to Patreon. Or you can friend me on Steam and gift me a game off my wishlist. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.